Hey, welcome to the Glenn Gower Podcast, the best podcast you'll listen to all day. <laughs> Sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Hollywood fantasy is just that. Fantasy, well, at least that's how it appears. Take the Keanu Reeves movie trilogy, The Matrix. The Matrix is a movie about AI growing at such a rapid pace it enslaves humanity. When asked about the three Matrix movies, Reeves awkwardly stated, it's really a documentary. A documentary? How could that be? Artificial intelligence is developing at such a rapid rate. Elon Musk warned that at some point, if we aren't careful, AI could become uncontrollable. AI is everywhere. It's on our computers, phones, tablets. It has become a way of life. It can provoke us to buy material items when we don't need them. We know it can sway an election. AI helps us in our problem solving. Do humans really know what we're getting into? Dennis, you're shaking your head. No. No way. Welcome, Dennis. Welcome. Thanks for having me again this you week. Bet. So AI. Welcome, listeners. AI, welcome aboard. Yeah, isn't this cool? I don't think so. You don't I'm, think so? I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared, to be honest with you. You know what? Tesla didn't know what he was doing when he created you know, the direct current system with his big Tesla coil. And General Electric and Westinghouse had no idea what he was creating when he discovered how electricity can move along an alternating current. Good points. And look at, just open your eyes and look around. You have lights on in your house. You have cell phone chargers. You We have microwaves in our house. Like... Humans never know what they're creating. Think about the first guy who made fire. Me, look, fire. Ooh, cool. <laughs> oh, shoot. I just burned down my house. Like, yeah, we we make mistakes all the time. But the guy is good. Fire, artificial intelligence. That might be a stretch. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm really flexible. Well, I'm going to put <laughs> some spiritual stuff on it today. Um, Go and, for it. And But I want you to first tell our audience, uh, give us a quick, quick, quick. I said quick. Give us a quick. <laughs> I'm certainly not on my game today, am I? You look good, though. I I feel not so good. Anyway, uh, artificial artificial intelligence. Yeah. What about it? When what was you, it born? Do you know when it was? When was it born? So, what is artificial intelligence at its core? I don't know. It's advanced pattern recognition, tendencies, trends, and we've been mapping tens and trends, tens, trends and tendencies. Forever. I've got an um, uh, awesome cousin who works for the uh, National Weather Service. And, well, actually two of them. And they have both said they've used modeling of past storms to help them predict future storms. What's artificial about that? Well, anything that moves beyond the present is artificial. Okay. When you plan, make a 10-year plan of what you want to do with your family or where you want to be or what you want to do for retirement... That's artificial. So it what does the word actually mean, artificial? Judah, what does the word artificial actually mean? He's go to a our, resident thesisaurus. Yes. Rebuilt? Rebuilt? Artificial, I would say, is defined as something that's synthetic or not real. It's not naturally occurring. That's what I would call artificial. Mm -hmm. So Artificial flavoring. Right. Artificial... Mm -hmm. um, um, fabrics, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, like rayon it comes from petroleum, not from not from a plant. Um, so that's what I would say is artificial intelligence is something that doesn't hasn't come from anything out of real experience. It's grown out of previous historical probability. And you and I you would call that intellect or reasoning or good old fashioned. I looked at Jim. He, he really messed up when he when he did that. I'm not going to do that, you know. Um, things that we learn through human trial and error. This artificial intelligence can, in nanoseconds, gather the host of the human experience that's documented on the Internet and compile it. And I can go back to my days at Dakota State where they said computers... And their answers are only as good as the people putting the information into them. Yeah, that's the bar. That's the bar. But with where we are and how artificial intelligence is building one on top of the other, on top of the other, we're creating a neural network where they really can start to learn from each other 
and multiple inputters, biases or tendencies or trends. It's very interesting. It's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, awesome. I'm not sure how <laughs> awesome it is, uh, but but it's different than fire. <laughs> it's not a need. Well, true. I mean, we didn't need fire to live. We just stay where it was. Warm. Kind of. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, can you imagine no fire up in here? How did the Ingalls family do it in DeSmith? Well, actually, they weren't in DeSmith. Yeah, they were in DeSmith they most were. of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Springfield not, and DeSmith, yeah. Fire is pretty important. Um, yeah, but you go back even, think of the, we're in Exodus right now with Exodus 90, right? They're at the base of the mountain. I mean, they don't need fire to live there. They're getting manna every morning from heaven. Doesn't require any cooking. Doesn't require any extra thing. But it goes into those basic needs. Now, artificial intelligence is uh, beyond basic needs. Oh, we need it. Our phones are beyond our basic needs. Uh, by the way, I just did something on my phone to digress for a second. Uh, I made it black and white. Black and white. Yeah, my phone is black and white now. When you turn on the screen, it's like a, you know, an old Andrew Griffith show. How'd you do that? Uh, it's in the settings. It's not difficult. I think it's under um, accessibility and then color scale. Will you put that in the chat notes for the video today? Because I would love to see like if there's a tutorial or YouTube tutorial on how to do that. That, that sounds cool. Well, the reason why we're looking at our phones all the time is because of dopamine, right? Yeah, we get blue a dopamine light. rush, right? So uh, I listened to a guy this morning and he said, Turn it to black and white. Turn it to grayscale and do it for a whole week. And I bet you won't have the tendency to go look because you don't have any colors blaring at you. So I did that. Anyway, let's get back to okay. AI. I digress. Yes. Because, uh, you know, phones fit into this AI thing. And Absolutely. And listeners, you might be thinking, well, I don't. I'm not using AI at all. You know how many people don't know about AI? <laughs> so many. That's why I asked you to define it. Well, this is. Do you know, do you have an actual stat? Oh, I don't, but I can tell you that um, I've been playing around with the a couple of the new platforms that are out there, uh, and just casually mentioning it to educators, casually mentioning it to lay people who work in factories and um, old people, young people. The ones who really seem to know a lot about it are at the university level with, with the college students, but high school students, parents... People our age whose kids are just kind of in the mix have no idea that this thing is even out there. So, yeah, I was talking to somebody recently and they said, well, I don't ever use AI. I said, are you <laughs> sure about that? <laughs> and I said, uh, do, do you have an iPhone? Yeah. Do you have the Hey Siri toggle on? What does that mean? Well, do you say Hey Siri and your phone responds or is, or is ready for you? Yeah. What do you think that is? No, that's not AI. Well, how do you think it does that? Hey, Alexis. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. And then now we're finding, like, even Alexis, as well as our iPhones or whatever you have, they're all listening in. How do I know that? Because I was talking to, well, where were we? I mean, you you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm I doing a Joe Biden all of a sudden. You know, the thing, the yeah. thing. But, <laughs> no, we were, I can't remember, we were, we were talking about buying something. Mm-hmm. And you look on her phone, and there it is. My wife and I were discussing. We we have a really nice shark vacuum cleaner. We love it. And all of the rotary little bristles that fluff the carpet when you vacuum had burnt off. Like They just got to the end of their useful life. So I'd called shark. I said, hey, I need a replacement part because they're like 12 bucks. It's easy to replace and rebuild sharks. They're awesome. I've got a shark, and we like ours. Okay. So I called shark. And they didn't have any replacement parts. So they gave us an option to pick between a new model and they would send it to us. Nice. And so Trista and I, no TV on, just phone sitting on the counter, sitting on the couch in the evening, talked about it and talked through the couple of different options that were available. And the next morning and for like the week before the week now, every time I open up my phone, whether it's on to a quick uh, website or if it's into my Facebook app or anything like that. What's the ad? Shark. They're yeah. listening. Oh, they're listening. There's a great movie out there that will scare the bejeebies out of you. It's called The Social Dilemma. I have not seen that. It's on Netflix, and I think you can get snippets of it from YouTube. What's the premise? The premise is big tech. Um, Instagram, TikTok, um, Snapchat, Facebook, all those big ones. The number of data points they know you better than you know you 
Yeah, I've heard that. And like 2,500 different data points because they, the camera on your phone tracks your eyes where you look and when you stop scrolling and what you're focusing on. And it builds this premise around what kind of advertising you should see. It builds this, this AI customizing you to be a better consumer because that's how these companies make money is off of their ability to drive a potential buyer to buying something. And it takes seven exposures before a person will buy something. So if you see it seven times in one day, guess where you're going for lunch? Mm. McDonald's. Heard it on the radio, heard it driving to work. Wow, it's been on my Facebook app five times. It's hungry. I didn't pack lunch today. Where should I go? You know what? McDonald's has got quick, easy food. I'll oh, go the rabbit. special sauce, man. By the way, you don't need the special sauce. It's Thousand Island. It is Thousand that's Island. That's all it is, people. <sighs> I'm pretty... so mad the day I found that out. Uh, no, that's, a, that's not Thousand Island, sir. It's, it's, it's a special proprietary blend that we use in McDonald's. BS. It's uh, Thousand, it's Island. Thousand Island. Yeah. Yep. Go buy a bottle at your local high So AI is everywhere. AI it's is getting everywhere. more and more powerful. And, um, and you wanted to talk about something I didn't know about, which there's quite a few things. It's... Uh, Take your pick. <laughs> anyway, but uh, AI GPT. Chat GPT. Chat. Oh, chat. I forgot the right. Chat yeah. GPT. Oh, yeah. What in the blank is that? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, for all of you listening, chat GPT, chat, 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 C-H-A-T, GPT, has many, many competitors. There's Lucy, L-U-C-I. Um, there is... You chat like YouTube. There's so this you is chat. on the same category of things it can do. Yep, open AI. Oh my goodness. Open AI. Um, chat. Uh, GPT four, GPT three. Um, these are just a few that I was able to pull open and discuss this morning. The one I am playing with most extensively right now is Chat GTP. So last night, for instance, um took an hour i got a tutorial from youtube on canva which is a I love canva okay so you know what i'm talking about there it's a graphic designer kind of hodgepodge of things that are just there and i used chat gpt to create my facebook post for my company for the next 30 days paired it with canvas backdrops and animations and in under an hour, I've got all my marketing done for the next 30 days. Because this AI answered one question. It was just, I asked the question, give me 30 healthy, happy quotes about the human body and nervous system. And in a minute, maybe a minute and a half, I had 30 bulletized quotes. And then... Get out of here. No, just quick. For, for for funny, and people are going to laugh at me at this, I wanted to see how, how this thing really, really worked one day. So I had it develop a new political party <laughs> with a, um, a doctrine of order and if you will, like an incorporating document of, hey, these are the foundations. And it was something like Reagan economics and Donald Trump's uh, foreign policy and uh, Strom Thurmond's um, social programs post-1970 with uh, George Thorogood's uh, uh, legal expertise. I, I could just pull these people from history. Something about Abraham Lincoln in there too, and George Washington's uh, military uh, leadership laws, and three thousand words. And I said, "Wow, this is really extensive. I need this bulletized. Give me fifty-four points of this. So give me fifty-four points. What? And, yeah. And then it reorganized it, and then I for each point." I just had it go through and expand one paragraph further defining what this bullet point meant. And I'm not kidding you. In like 30 minutes, I had this entire new doctrine of what a new political party could be based on all these guys from history's influence on our culture, what it would look like. This, it, is, a, this is a college professor nightmare. 
Oh, this is the this is the number one tool for Chat GPT right now. It was created by some twenty year old somewhere, you know this, in Silicon Valley or something. And literally, you can put all of the premise and the preface in there of here is my paper I need written. I need five thousand words written at an eighth grade level. Blah 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 blah. There's a really funny. Um, a podcast out there where you're talking about this chat GPT as a as a platform and they had the guy on the on the discussion talk through what is quantum physics please explain I mean this is what you put in chat GPT it's got a little search bar little little statement bar please explain quantum physics as a third grade nursery rhyme as written by Snoop Dogg and it does it? It does it. Oh, my goodness. In like 90 seconds. You've got to be kidding no, me. No, no. It's, it's 90 like, seconds? Yeah. And it breaks like his, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And so it's all written in the rhyme and the rhythm of Snoop Dogg and how, how his songs oh, are sung. this is freaky. And like, I, so I did one last night, and I should share it with you if I can pull it up on my history. I, I asked, please explain Mission Blueprint's effect and impact into Catholicism and religion as a whole. Does it know who Mission Blueprint is? Yes. Is there any impact? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah. That there's actually impact, but it can do that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wrote okay, out so, six paragraphs, probably 350, 400 words. Hmm. Yeah. It was, and I asked it, how was Glenn Gower's influence into this? And it didn't know you. Hmm. But it knows Mission Blueprint. Well, that's good. But this is the crazy thing. So, like, OpenAI is is now will take that request for that paper to be written, and they can ask it to also cite all of its sources. So it'll make a bibliography at the end of it, and it'll footnote, and it'll annotate, and it'll put, like, literally, you could write a doctoral thesis with Chat, GPT, or OpenAI in probably 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, tell our viewers, how does this work? Is it an app on your phone? Do you... Do you open up Google and go to a website? So I use Google Chrome, and on Google Chrome, it is uh, chatgpt.com. And when you open it up, you have to create a user account, and you just link that to, and I have it linked to my Gmail account. And from there, it's just open. It's open and free. There are some that you can pay for, but when you pay for it, you get more resources. OpenAI is linked directly to the web in real time. So... Um, there's a lot of people out there that are using chat GPT and more open AI to do um, news press releases. They're using it to track um, trends within the markets, especially with all the banking stuff that's happened in the last few weeks, um, how to make money, how to, how to anticipate the market. I've got a friend at the bank. He dabbles with this stuff and he is using it to write code He's using it to write um, open source code to track and basically create his own um, stock ticker on anticipating trends of whether he should buy puts or calls within the market. And open source code C, C++, Sanskrit, um, uh, Java, I mean... It knows all of the computer languages, so it will write code for you if you want it to. Well, it's time to invoke the great Billy Joel here. I love it. Billy Joel's one of my favorites. We didn't start the fire, baby. <laughs> but he has a song called, I think it's called Honesty. It might be called something else, but Honesty is such a lonely, is it such a, everyone is so untrue. Question. We um, assume that who's ever writing code for these open chats, open AI chats, or whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. open AI they are being forthright in their code writing. In other words, couldn't this AI chat GPT lie? Well, again, it goes back to what I told you when I was in Dakota State a number of years ago is computers are only as good as the people inputting the information. Right. Now, if you have someone who is really woke-minded, you could manipulate the data and the al the algorithm because that's all it comes down to is it comes down to a mathematical equation kids do your stem science technology engineering and math do you know that 50 63 percent of the world's billionaires are engineers 
I did not know that. Yeah. Of all the billionaires in the world, 63% of them are engineers. Hmm. So do your STEM. But anyhow, what we're saying here is that if someone has an agenda, they can be manipulated. You think back to, this is the one nice thing about when young people create things. They tend to create things out of a necessity and out of the moment. Think of our children playing. Like they can take five things out of the trash and create an, an imaginary world that keeps them busy for hours. No harm or no foul ever intended. They just do. Mark Zuckerberg, when he created Facebook, cre- he just wanted a way to create an experience where people could date. He just wanted to make it easier for nerds to date. At least that's what we're told. Well, I mean, but if you look at really the premise of it, it was only a .edu could have access. You had to be in college. You had to have a user domain at the college. And it was really meant to tighten up that social circle at your university. Not to mention that he stole the idea from those brothers yeah. that sued him for millions and won. Yeah, but I mean, what's a million dollars when you're making billions? So anyhow... But now look at what Facebook has done once it's gone public. It's now under a board of directors. The goal and objective is now to make money. I mean, I don't know how many of our listeners listeners know, but Facebook now has put in a proposal from the board of directors that they're going to start charging a monthly user fee. For Facebook? Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay that? Well, think of all the photos you have there. Think of all the videos, all the history. Better download it now. Well... Or just do like the rest of us have done for a million years. We just move on. Yeah, that's we don't. Right. We don't have to keep looking back and remembering that our kids fell down and skinned their knee ten years ago. Yeah, they were like Apple creating some kind of Facebook ecosystem where they had your pictures and memories, and now and then I'll right we'll get an email of do you, or it's it's on your phone. Do you remember this? And mm-hmm. It's like oh, I remember. And you go back to Facebook and you look at those pictures or They're whatever. Feeding your dopamine, man. Oh, yeah, feeding yeah. your dopamine. They're not a bunch of idiots. No, but this goes back to this movie again, Social Dilemma. Check it out. It's ninety minutes that you will be freaked out and you probably throw your phone in a blender. You know, I probably won't be surprised by anything I see anymore. No, but it doesn't stop you from using it. That's so, the crazy thing. Yeah. So Elon Musk, um, he's. Everyone's talking about Elon Musk. They have been for a while now. But he seems to have some stock in this AI stuff. And he said, quote, the danger of training AI to be woke, in other words, lie, is deadly. Mm-hmm. He went on to say... Anybody seen the movie Terminator? I have not seen the Terminator. You've never seen any of the... Arnold Schwarzenegger? Ar- no, I have not. Okay, so he's... I can't a- stand Schwarzenegger. He's the worst actor. Like, well, Tom Cruise. No, Schwarzenegger's worse. So, I, I can't stand Arnold Schwarzenegger. Go ahead. But for real, in that movie, he's AI. He is an AI. I mean, it's of like the the other side of the coin for the Matrix. AI takes over, wipes out half a human civilization because they human civilization becomes a threat to their survival. No different than we chase out wild beasts and trap wolves and anything that threatens our survival. We kill. Well, the AI learns that. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Great series. So Great that, series. that came on in the early 80s, didn't it? The first one. The first one. So that's about AI. Yeah, and the last one. Way just, back then. Yeah, and I mean, they've just released Terminator 4, 5, and that's been released in the last five years. Is he still in the movies? He is. He is, and um, uh, Christian Bale is in them. Oh, finally a decent actor. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the the AI concept was was I mean, go back to Star Trek. Now that's a TV series you should be watching. Hey computer. You no, know, no, they, just computer. Computer, oh, computer. Computer. Working. Yep. So like they started with AI voice recognition in that TV show. They were miles ahead. Well, does does art become fact or how do, how is that put? Art and fiction. I know. I know where you're going. Yeah. yeah. Like, where, what comes first? Was it really developed, or because of the show, are they going to develop it? Right. Like, I've learned. You know, they talk about lasers and laser blasters, and they talked about coming out of the George Lucas films using lightsabers and photons, and well, son of a gun, I use lasers in my practice now for healing, just like Doctor Crusher did on the Star Trek show of healing the body. Like that's how I use lasers in my office. 
And that technology was developed and evolved since the 1970s. What it took to do it took the size of a, a small gymnasium. Now I can hold the palm of my hand. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. But again, where does AI fall into all of this in our Christian lives? Yeah, there seems to be... Um Throw some spirituality. I'm just going to speculate. I have, I like no, it. I have no idea what I'm talking about here, but it, it seems to me a type of new Tower of Babel AI. Tell me more. What does that mean? Well, Tower of Babel, if you remember in the Old Testament, <clears throat> it's in Genesis for the Catholics. A um, little, little poke there. Anyway, the Tower of Babel, they, they wanted to make a name for themselves, and they had uh, incredible technology that they were using, and they created this huge tower that you'd walk around so they could be... God, this is a bit similar. I, I, I'm just kind of putting it together as I'm talking to you, but it's like God is, uh, of course, Jesus is God, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know. He is uh, awesome, the omnipotent. He has all data points. He knows everything. And it seems like, I'll use the word feel in a spiritual way, it feels like discerning wise that this is the new type of God, the omniscience, you know, kind of like a consciousness by itself. And it literally scares the hell out of me, to be honest, that mankind, I think, honestly, with the influence of some help from hell, Mm -hmm. um, that's my view. That might not be true. Uh, I want to be open to all things here, but uh, is creating their own type of God through AI. But isn't that fit the model of what the modern church is craving? Tell me more about this. What What is one of the biggest arguments and biggest irritations among people who don't go to church? God doesn't... Exist? Talk to me. Doesn't talk to me. He's not real. He did all this stuff in the Bible. He Sure, he appeared to the disciples and Jesus was there. Where has he been for the last 2,000 years? And we can talk about the... What are those when the when Mary cries and the, the 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 statues bleed and oh that stuff with the Catholic Church? What is that? Um, it happened down in Mexico. They've analyzed the blood and said, "Yep, it's from a heart that's under distress." You sent me a video on it a couple of weeks. Oh, ago. that was yeah, that was a different thing. That was a host that was left in the church. Okay, but similar things like God's presence was made known, but young people. My age and under, I'll, I'll, I'll speculate and I'll, I'll mass into a fairly large clump. Where's God been for the last 2,000 years? He didn't talk to me. He doesn't talk to my family. He doesn't appear to us. He doesn't lead us. He does, you know, there's all this. Well, you can't interact with him. I don't know how to interact with him. When we started Exodus 90 with all these guys, how many of them said, like, jeepers, sitting down talking for an hour of prayer is really hard. But you know what? You can get on your computer, chat GPT, in 90 seconds, I got an answer. Man, that God's listening to me. He knows what I need to know for an answer. It is God type. It is. It's scary. But build an idol against me. You know, this is all Exodus all over again. Like, you will not build an idol against me. You will not. What is, what commandment is that? Like, number s- You shall have another God before me. That's, That's the one. first one. Yeah. yeah. Shall make no idols. That's still the first one, I think, isn't is that, it? Is that so far the Pope's first one? Yeah, it okay. is. I just read these. Man, Moses. I know the Protestants story. have a different version because when you look at, I think they're both, It's the Ten Commandments are in Exodus and they're also in Deuteronomy and they're written a little bit different. And um, I think the Catholics and some Protestants summarize them very similarly, but there's a different. There's a couple of different Protestants that have a few more because there seems to be a few more written, so it seems weird because it might have been number two. But look, like you think about how this AI can easily replace our insatiable need as a culture and a society for instantaneous feedback. Oh, yeah. It's really and I'm going to go to my computer god and talk to him. Yeah. Have we reached the point of no return with AI or can we churn back? Oh, no. The, the cat's out of the bag. The, this, this, we're going to ride this one out. Oh, my gosh. You think so? Absolutely. You can't, something learned can't be unlearned. Something, if this is what's available in the commercial use for you and I, 
for AI, for tracking people, for tracking movements, and we know what we know from watching a movie like Social Dilemma is what's going on in a corporate level. We know national defense, military, government has something 10 times better. Yeah, that's true. And identifying threats. If you ever, if you want a really interesting movie to see how AI works in a military type setting, Eagle Eye. Mm -mm. Um, who is the gentleman that we did the uh, podcast on um, from the Transformer movies? And he uh, he did the father. Oh, the Padre Pio movie? Padre Pio. did? Um, yeah. T -t 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 Boo, buffet? Boo. Buffet? That guy. Yeah. He's in that Eagle Eye movie. Oh. And he is a twin, and his brother's really high military. But the AI in that movie manipulates luggage, explosives hijacks cars, locks cars, uses satellite technology and guides this computer to destroying the entire U.S. government. Yeah, but these are just fantasy movies. No one would ever be behind these malicious ideas. Well, that's the running joke with Elon, Elon Musk is don't ever show AI the Terminator movies. Like, don't ever give them access to this idea. But if they have access to the Internet... Good or bad, it is what it is. You, so, you, you will not put it back in the can it came from. So uh, here's what I don't understand. If we are at the point of no return, and it seems to be that we are, mm -hmm. man, Jesus has got to be coming back soon or making a big disturbance in the force because humanity is already in big trouble. But if this AI chat, GPT, or type uh, artificial intelligence algorithms continue to grow... We won't know if we're coming and a going. No, and this is the, the craziest thing you start to talk about from a quantum standpoint of what would Jesus' return really look like that? Because Jesus' return to turn this mechanism would almost have to be an entire cultural reset. And you would have to knock us back 10,000 years in our understanding because science, technology, evolution of understanding of machinery, science, engineering, mathematics, you can't hide from it. There's cameras down every single road you go down here that are learning traffic patterns to know when lights should go green and when lights should go red. I mean, that's being controlled by a computer program. Jesus would have to wipe the planet clean to get rid of that overreaching influence, that evil. I don't think that would be a problem for him at all. I don't think it'd be a problem either, but, but how, I don't. Go ahead. The pain. Oh, yes. The pain is coming. I think the pain is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I think from a spiritual point of view, every 2,000 years, something pretty big happens. And uh, I think pain is coming. I think we're going to get knocked back um, to a different way of life. Now, I think we'll still have heat in our homes. I do. I'm not sure. I think it's going to be different. But uh, if you think, think about internet, where, where AI is, it can't, there won't be. See, I think Internet's going to be different. I think um, I'm speculating, of course, but I think the Internet as we know it is going to get shut down. And we'll never have it again. We'll have a generic... Um, it'll be like going to a grocery store. You're only going to see the items. You're not going to see the ads. You're not going to see the half nude women. You're not going to see any of that stuff. I think it's all coming. A but, shift is coming. And I'm going to play devil's advocate. Yeah. I don't, um, look at our satellite technology. Look at what Elon Musk has created with the North star program. There, there's so many moving pieces that you and I are aware of, but there's so much more we don't even know. Right. And how do you eliminate all of that human knowledge? How do you eliminate all that human access? There's going to be a, some cataclysmic event that's going to do something. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm You'd speculating. You almost need a global EMP. Yep. But you take out an electromagnetic pulse that takes out everything. You, you don't have heat in your house. If you don't have a fireplace, you don't have heat. You, the gas meters being run by the gas plants... The gas ain't flowing because yep. that's all run by AI as well. It's managed by pressures. The electrical grid, mm -hmm. it's managed by peak time, off time. 
our electrical rate is different at our house between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. than it is between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. We pay a different electrical rate because AI's learned that's when more demand is so we can make more money. Blah, blah, blah. This, this, this is, these are tools. And I think just as David's sword, well, not David's sword, Goliath's sword was a force of evil against David's family, David picked up a slingshot and carried a slingshot. He didn't even take stones with him when he went down to fight Goliath. He found them in the riverbed. And he took Goliath's sword after he knocked him out and cut off his head with his tool. Like, that's the only thing I can see how us Christians take what the evil one brings and what comes into our arena and we fight back. And you can't go bury your head. You can't go stick your head in the sand and pretend like you don't know and that you've never heard of this stuff and it's not going to affect you. You need to sit down and... And go over this with your kids and go, hey, let's see what this thing tells us about the Old Testament. What does this say about Jesus coming before Moses when he talks about his angel will go before you in battle? I mean, talk about the premonitions of Jesus being in their lives thousands of years before he comes to earth through Mary. But see what ChatGPT says about it. See what your kids are doing with it. Don't hide from it. It's there. You're not, you're not, you think got internet, they're, they're going to learn about it. So be ahead of the curve and pray about it. Pray about how you're going to use it. Right. They're tools. And tools can be made for good things and they can make bad things. Yeah, that's a great analogy. The David story. We're going to end the way because it's true. Uh, you know, imagine if David's, oh, there's no Goliath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys are, you're full of it. And never actually looks around to see Goliath. He's too busy looking at his iPhone. Mm, that's right. But I love that um, that storyline of he didn't even take rocks with him. He had a sling, but he found rocks along the way and needed one, but took five, I think, didn't he? He did. Five smooth stones. Yeah, needed one, and he used his own sword to chop off Goliath's head. I think the chopping is coming soon. Something's got to give, ladies and gentlemen. This culture cannot continue to go this way. It's very, very bizarre. It, the, like your um, reference to the video you talked about last week, it marks the end of an era. Not necessarily the end of time, but an end of an era. Agreed. I always thought, you know, at the end of the Bible, you have revelations, and, and then you're going to have this Antichrist. And if you listen to last week's podcast, the a, a priest, alleged, well, a priest did say, not even allegedly, that he knows who the Antichrist is. And, and he's that, alive today. And that we'll all know him. We we'll probably have already seen him. Very soon. Very soon. And so the quick assumption is, oh, then, then Jesus comes back. I don't think so. I think Jesus is going to do something. And for the Catholics in the Catholic world, um, in the 20th century, there have been different visitations from members of heaven. And one consistent theme is there's going to be a sign in the sky or something where we will all know that God is real and um, we will all see ourselves for who we really are, like an illumination of conscience. And um, that draws closer every day now with the craziness of, uh, of the world. And, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't think the satanic church is alive and well, then you really do have your head in the sand. Mm -hmm. It's right in front of you. Takeaways from today. You know, the... I love what you said there about the devil's real. This is, this is real stuff we're dealing with and wake up, wake up, talk to your family, talk to your children, know what they're influenced by, know who's influencing them, know what they're, they're getting fed because let's be honest, most of them spend more time with their friends and on their phones and at school socially than they do at church so get into their world and get out get into what they're figuring out you know you and i've talked about this since our first exodus adventure three two yeah three years ago now 2020 that we have to wake up and we have to be 
aware and giving just an hour a week on Sunday isn't enough. And if we're given an hour every day out of 168 hours in a week, that's seven hours. That's seven hours out of 160. Not much. Like your kids are probably doing less. So get in their life and make make prayer and make gratitude and make humility a part of your daily conversation with them. That's my takeaway. That's great. Get back to the cores. Yeah. Um, here's my takeaway. Salvation is at hand. God has been trying to reach out to you all these years and you have been distracted. And this AI is another huge distraction that is put before you. I'm not going to say they're magic tricks or I'm not going to say it's from hell, although it all could be. But salvation is still at hand and God has been trying to reach out to you. Give him a chance. He's not a fuddy-duddy. <laughs> He's just not. He's alive and real and really does love us. Amen. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, you are loved. And, Amen. And may God strengthen the bars of, of your, your gates. gates. Hey, thanks for listening to the Glengower Podcast, sponsored by Mission Blueprint. Mission Blueprint is a nonprofit ministry started by Glenn and Jamie to sanctify the family. Our income is donation-based, and we need your help. Please support us financially by going to www.mission-blueprint.org and be a part of our financial team. Thank you, and may God strengthen the bars of your gate.